and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. Welcome to Transfer Hub, where we take a daily look at transfer rumours, links, noise, incomings and outgoings at Aston Villa. On the channel today, we should have a pretty busy day. Uh, we're looking at two definite uploads. We are going to have the tactical debrief out later on today, so stay tuned for that. We may have another episode that will be dropping in the day as well. Uh, if something happens that I expect, it may happen today anyway. So stay tuned for that. Maybe three episodes. But Fabrizio Romano has spoken and he's spoken about Aston Villa. If any of you were on our live stream yesterday or watched the match reaction, we'll know that we were... We mentioned at the very end that we were linked with a player. So Aston Villa are closing in on a deal to sign 2004-born right-back Kosta Nedeljkovic. Um, so he's a right-back who is going to be coming to Aston Villa. A very young player, a player that's going to sign for Aston Villa and stay on loan at his current club and then move to Aston Villa in the summertime. Exciting. We need a right-back. Yes, we may need a right back right now, but like I said early on in the window, is that we will be doing signings at Aston Villa now for the long term as well. You know, remember the Martinelli 2.5 million or something like that at Arsenal? We'll be doing those type of deals. Emery can pick a player, and with Monchi scouting. And looking at those players that fit a profile, it's a great model that we have had. And I'll be honest, I think it's the best model that I think we've possibly had in my lifetime at supporting Aston Villa. Because the model is in tune with the manager. The manager has bought Monchi in. Monchi's Emery's guy. And the two working hand in hand together are what is going to grow Aston Villa and it's going to enable our recruitment to be solid. You know, when you look at like a recruitment model for Brighton and you look how fine-tuned it is and, you know, you might think they can't keep finding those players, but they keep finding those players. Yeah, a couple of them don't work out, the ones that we don't really know about. You know, when I speak to Brighton fans, I get told that, you know, there are ones that, you know, don't make the media and, and they've kind of flopped. But I think we've really got a solid, uh, not a structure, but a solid transfer philosophy that we're yet to see. You know, we, we're only at the very, very start of it. And yeah, we keep getting linked with some of Monchi's former players from former clubs. But, you know, this is now where we're starting to get into the Unai and Monchi era of signing players. And this feels like, Probably the first one. The first one where it's a player that we've not really watched that much. He's very, very young. There's not much, We don't really know much about him. We've not really seen too many games, although I've seen one game in play uh, against Manchester City. Um, so there's an unknown there and it feels quite exciting. And I think I feel good about some of these little unknowns if they keep coming in because... It's a sign of, of of good scouting and good recruitment that we, we're going down those roads and we're not just going down roads of, oh, we, this player is absolutely fantastic. We're going to try and get him. Yeah, you want those little ones as well that can that can grow us. And when, when I say grow us, what I mean by that is a player that's sometimes not just here for the here and now. You know, a player that is like, say, for, if we use an example of, say, um, Alex Moreno, you know, think of Moreno on the right-hand side then, so we'll use him on the left-hand side. But So we've got an established player that plays on the right-hand side, but then we've now got this up-and-coming right left-back, right-back, which is, that's going to be pushing and playing and trying to get through and break through that team. And then he then becomes the future, so he grows into that mould. And then we've got that ready-made replacement already there. You know, so I think it's... Fantastic to be linked with these players, and I think it's going to be. I've got a good vibe about it. I've got a good feeling about it. 
Um, you know, he's been scouted for a while. We're hearing from Fabrizio. So I think he's already playing in the Champions League as well. So he's got that experience at such a young age. And I just think, you know, sometimes as fans, you know, we can we can look at the team and think, yeah, we want this attacker to come in. We need a right back for right now. But this is a future signing as well. You know, we're not we're not just thinking anymore of this window. And we're not just thinking of the summer window. We're thinking windows ahead now. We're thinking where our team can potentially be under Unai in four or five years' time. And I think because we've had managers where, and we've, you know, we've we've been doing okay. You know, we got back in the Premier League and, and the recruitment was all right. But we've never really been able to comfortably say in three or four years' time, where are we going to be? Because we've always been in that here and now of scrambling relegation, trying to get back into the top six, trying to get back into Europe. And we've always just been, yeah, we want to get there. But now that we're there, now we're competing, now we're challenging, we can start to see upon the horizon a, a, a long-term longevity with Unai, with the owners, with Monchi, that we can try and build that pathway for three or four years' time. You know, and, and I think that's huge. I think that's huge for the owners as well now because they, they're probably going to have a, a map and a plan of, you know, this season, next season. But they can start venturing now further down the line. And when you're bringing in some of these younger players that are 18, you know, in, in six or seven years' time, you know, if they've absolutely smashed it, and they're going to start being in their peak, peak years. So I think those, these type of signings are needed and are necessary. Um, and I think I think it's a really, really good thing. So we'll have a look in general uh, transfer hub fashion then at his player profile. So Costa Nedeljkovic, 18 years of age, right-footed. Right-footed, right-back. Yes, yes, it makes sense to me. Uh, player value, 2.7. Fabrizio Romano is mentioning around, here's the link where it's coming from. Um, he's set to stay at the Serbian club until the end of the season. Talks are at the final stages, uh, less than 9 million euros. Villa have been scouting Costa for a long time, as per the Telesports. <clears throat> so that's the link, that's the rumour. Uh, so yeah, 18 years of age. Uh, he has a sofa score rating in the league of 7. 0.04. So he's above the seven average that I really, really like. Uh, you can see from his heat map that it is predominantly red across that right hand side. So that tells you a little bit about his playing style, likes to get forward. He's got a real good presence on the pitch. He's got great physicality about him. He's a, he's a big, tall tall lad that I think can can fit that mould of that Unai system of just dropping back and sitting a bit deeper, but he can also attack at the same time as well. So he's had some really big games there, 7.5, 7, 7.5. He's played 12 games, started 10. He's got no goals. He's got one assist, 86% passing accuracy, 86 in his own half, opposition half, 76. Accuracy of long balls, 53. We have got 1.5 tackles per game, 3.7 ball recoveries per game, which is which is massive. Uh, he's got successful dribbles at 80% of his dribbles are successful, which is very, very good. 69% of his uh, total duels are won. 76 of his ground duels are won. And 43 of his aerials are won. So an absolute monster. An absolute monster with those duels. Uh, if we have a look at some of his, uh, he's played in the UA for Youth League, Champions League, uh, Paris Premier Cup. So if we just have a little look at the game that I saw him play, it was against Manchester City. And he looked very, very composed, very composed and very confident. And I remember he was giving Grealish a tough time, gave Grealish a bit of a tough time in this game. So he's played Champions League football, great experience for him. Uh, and he's done pretty, pretty well. 6.5 against City, a 7 against Leipzig. As he's played both games against Leipzig, so he's made four appearances in the Champions League. 
So, yeah, it's a really exciting signing. Um, and I think it's got great scope and great potential. And I think more of these type of signings will be needed long term for the future of Aston Villa. So, Villa fans, I brought this news early for you today. Hopefully, we've got three episodes coming out today. Um, and then we've got the debrief, which will be coming out a little bit later on. And I'm going to record that right after this. So, cheers, everyone. Smash a like, comment your thoughts up the villa.